open, let's call it 935. So Tristan, Stefan, and then Cam. <laughs> and coach over here. We're joined now by student athletes from UConn. If you have a question for the student athletes from UConn, raise your hand. We'll send a microphone to you. Let's start up front here to the left. Thank you. This one is for Cam. Your name and media oh, outlet, sorry. sir. Yep. Uh, Jake Fenner, Daily Mail. Cam, over here. Yeah, it doesn't help. Hi, Cam. Far left up front, guys. Um, the three of you were named to the uh, top team, the all-tournament team. You especially, this is something that uh, happened to you after you transferred to the school. Is that something that uh, Coach kind of sold you on, those kinds of opportunities, and is that what drew you to the school? No, I mean, it was, it was all about the team and going to accomplish another championship. You know, I had never been a part of a, a championship like this, and, uh, you know, that's really what Coach Hurley and I talked about in the recruiting process. And, you know, this was our goal from day one. So to do it with, with your brothers and your family that you go to war with every day is just, you know, really special right now. Continuing with questions for the UConn student athletes, second row, Wall Street Journal. Robert O'Connell, Wall Street Journal. This one's for Cam. Uh, there was a moment there, Cam, sorry, right here in the middle. There was a moment there where uh, I think you got a foul called on you and you were maybe looking for a jump ball or something and you were running around and coach kind of calmed you down, kept you from maybe getting a tee or something like that. I'm curious, how often is that going in that direction and not you guys having to calm coach down about not going too nuts on the sideline? <laughs> yeah, I think, you know, we're two similar personalities, but, you know, I just, I was going for the offensive rebound and felt like I had the ball and, you know, just heat of the moment reaction. Uh, but, you know, luckily I have coach to have my back and calm me down because I probably would have gotten a technical if, if I didn't uh, calm down. So, yeah. If you have a question for the UConn student athletes, please raise your hand. Let's go to the third row on the right side. Nick Lawrence, I'm a major man. It's Cam. 20, or, so you came into college, you only had one scholarship offer. You went to Loyola. Your first year, you were the first team in the whole country to get eliminated from conference tournaments. Just talk about the trials and tribulations to get here, get that win. And also, you have some nice hardware up against your brother. He's won the Tour, and now you're a national champion. Just talk about that with your brother, a little relationship there. Yeah, you know, I wouldn't be here without without my brother. Um, you know, having four years ahead of me, I've always been able to watch him, you know, kind of grow up and go through the similar experiences that I, I'm now going through. Um, so, you know, like I said, I wouldn't be here without him, and I'm just so thankful for all the, you know, work he's helped me put in. And, um, yeah, I, I can't say enough about my family, and, you know, I wouldn't be here without them. So, so thankful. Next question is for Adam. And, Adam, hang on to the microphone when you're done. Yeah, for all three of you guys, Adam Zagori, NJ.com, I think the UConn guards outscored the Purdue guards 55-17. to 17. How much going into the game was it your mindset to kind of control and disrupt their guards, and uh, how proud of you are the fact that you dominated them 55-17? to 17? Adam, pass the mic to your left, and we'll ask Cam to take that, then Stefan, and then Tristan. Go first. Go first. Yeah. Um, I mean, it was a big part of our game plan, just trying to uh, limit as much as we can from the guards, and I feel like we did a good job at that. And, you know, just playing confident on the other end, I feel like Coach put us in great positions to be successful all night, and it worked out for us. Tristan. Yeah, I mean, uh, we, knew, we knew he was going to get his points, and, you know, it took him 25 shots to get 37 points. So, you know, that was the game plan, just uh, limit the guards. And, um, you know, Steph Cam, um, you know, Hoss, when he got in there, they did great jobs on the guards. and you know, limits to them and their impact. Cam, did you have something to add to that? Yeah, um, obviously, you know, coming in, we knew Zach, Zach Eady's a tough guy to stop. Uh, you know, we wanted to make him work for everything, but, you know, I think the coach had made a point that we'd be really locked in if, you know, we could control their three-point attempts. And, you know, I think holding them to seven, uh, you know, we were really just locked in on, you know, not letting those other guys get involved in the game. Um, and I think, you know, Steph and Tristan and all the guards did a great job. In the center of the room, please raise your hand for us. Hi, Adi Joseph of uh, CBS Sports. Um, did you guys, uh, and this is for any of you, did you expect 
them to back off three pointers? Like you, you just talked about how you defended them, but did you actually expect that they would simply not take them? That they would show that, I guess, discipline and react to how you were defending them, or was that did that come as a surprise to you? Tristan, can you take that one for us? I mean. Um, we watch their film and they get their three pointers off. You know, people going down there and helping on Edie. Uh, you know, the coaches did a great job game planning and made sure that um, that was a focus on that we didn't leave the three point line and, and let Edie do all you know his his damage because you know he only shoots twos, he shoots no threes. So um, if he makes 15 twos like he did today, that's 30. And then where the rest of the points gonna come from? So you know they they did a great job of scouting and um, yeah, credit to them. If you have a question for the student athletes from UConn, please raise your hand. We'll send the microphone to you. All right, we'll take one in the back of the room on the right side. Andy Dorf, Sports Byline USA Radio Network. Talk about your guys on the ball pressure, just relentless throughout the whole game, and how you made it so daunting for those guys to basically get any shot up. Stefan, can you take that one, please? Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, uh, I feel like our post defense started with, you know, pressuring the ball and just trying to limit, uh, you know, just easy, easy catches for Edie. So, I mean, I, I feel like our coaches did a great job at, uh, with the scout and I feel like we executed it well and it worked out for us. Final question for the UConn student athletes all the way right. Can't get any further right. Uh, this is Richard Smith with Independent News Media here in Phoenix. Uh, this question's for Tristan. Something Coach talked about on Saturday was how this team never lost its drive. They they didn't act like they were the, the defending champions. They kept their focus. They were hungry. How much did you take it on yourself to set that kind of tone for the team? And then when did you realize that these guys were as locked in as the team was last year, if, if not more? Was it even before the season started? Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't take any credit for it. San Antonio, you know, I was all coach. Um, you know, last year was last year. It's not uh, defending. You know, that, that trophy, 23 trophy is, is in the crib. And coach office, uh, nobody can take that from him. So, uh, you know, this is a whole different year. We, we had goals, winning five championships. And, you know, we got all those done. So, you know, credit coach to set the tone. And everybody just follows his lead. We want to congratulate Cam, Stefan, and Tristan. They're going to head back to the locker room. The UConn locker room is open until at least 10.05. And Coach, we'll ask you to make an opening statement, then we'll take some questions. Yeah, uh, you, know, uh, you know, first off, you know, just uh, like I said, I think yesterday was a privilege uh, to share the court with uh, – you know, with, with, with Matt Painter and, and Purdue, uh, you know, one of the top programs in the country, one of the best coaches in the country, and uh, you know, just total class, uh, you know, class uh, personified uh, across the board with, with, with those guys. So, uh, you know, obviously, you know, what could you say? We won by a lot again. Next question is for Eddie. We're going to have to hustle to bring him a microphone. Eddie, raise your hand. Thanks, Eddie. Yes, Coach, you won by a lot again. Congrats. <laughs> um, Eddie Pels from AP. After they made their one three-pointer, you hopped off the bench and called a timeout. I know you were in quite a, a, Fr la a lather. That, <laughs> but, I mean, was that specifically about, like, making sure we don't – this doesn't become a trend? Well, that was a, that was a late clock a mistake. Um, uh, you know, Braden had it with three on the clock, and he used the ball screen. And uh, in such a late, you know, late shot clock situation, like Donovan needed to get up there high and eliminate the attempt. But um, you know, just the, the game plan and, and Luke, you know, Luke for for a day and a half prep uh, to have us as ready as he did uh, defensively for that game was just impressive. We, we obviously, you know, we we didn't want to give up threes. We we didn't care if Zach. Uh, you know, took 25, 28 shots to get 30, 35 points. The, the, this whole game plan was like no Smith, no Lawyer, uh, no Gillis, no Jones. You know, keep that collective group under 18, 20 points as a group. They had no chance to win, no matter how well Zach played. Up front, Pete. Uh, 
Dan, Pete Thamel from ESPN, uh, you won your six games in this tournament by 140 points. That's more than any team. You really haven't backed away as you've dominated through this, t speaking to, of your dominance. So I'm just curious, do you feel like this is a historic team, and do you feel like this is one of the greatest teams of all time? Um, I, th I think it's... I think it's up there in terms of the greatest two-year runs that a program's maybe ever had, just because, um, you know, I don't want to, <laughs> I, I guess, I can't say anything about Duke because I'm going to piss my brother off, um, but I guess I could say stuff about Florida, <laughs> but I love Billy Donovan, so I'm in a bad spot. Um, I just think it, 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 it's, it's the best two-year run, I think, in a very, very long time just because uh, of everything we lost from last year's team. Um, to lose that much and, and, again, to do what we did again, uh, you know, it, it's got to be as, two, uh, as, as, as impressive a two-year run as the program's had uh, since prior to whoever did it before Duke. Um, to me, it is more impressive than what Florida and Duke did. Um, b because they brought back their entire teams, and you know we, we uh, you know we lost <laughs> we lost some major players. To the left of the aisle, coach Field of sixty eight. Dan Mike Miller, Field of sixty eight. I'll give you an opening afterward. Jay Wright said it was the most dominant team he can remember, so that gives you a chance there. Does that is that what you're going to be making your mark on? Dominance, nothing but dominance. Is that going to be the standard going forward? Is it a standard you can reach every year? Yeah, um, you know, I know, you know things are going to be a little crazy for the next 10 days. Um, unfortunately, you know, we're, we're going to head into the portal. Um, like everybody else now, I've been dreading this moment. Uh, <laughs> but now we're here. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll enjoy this for a couple of days. But then, um, you know, we're going to, you know, on the flight home tomorrow, we'll start talking about, you know, what the roster is going to look like. Obviously, we graduate some players. We're going to lose a couple potentially to the NBA early entry. And, and uh, you know, we're going to dive in and, and, and put together a roster that, 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 that will, can play a comparable level of basketball uh, to the one that you guys have witnessed the last two years. That's, I know what our mindset will be. Uh, you know, we're, we're going to be focusing on trying to put together you know, a, a three-year run, not just a two-year run. Front row on the left side, Coach. Hi, Coach. Jake Fenner, Daily Mail. Um, to piggyback off of a previous question, to accomplish this feat in this era of the NIL and the transfer portal, it almost could be considered something entirely different and entirely particularly special with the way the landscape currently is. Do you think that winning two in a row in this era is something that could be replicated again? And do you think that because you won in this era, it deserves to be held in a different regard? Yeah, I mean, I think that's probably for you guys to decide. I think, you know, it's obviously it's a special run. Um, and, yeah, I mean, shit, we're, we're going to try and replicate it again. <laughs> you know, we're, we're going to, um, you know, we're, we're, we're going to maintain a championship culture. Uh, we, we brought in, we're bringing in some very talented high school freshmen. Uh, our returning players through player development will take a big jump, and then we'll strategically add through the portal. So um, yeah, I don't think that, that we're going anywhere. Front row, left. Brett Friedlander, SaturdayRoad.com. Dan, you mentioned your brother. Uh, he, he won back-to-back -back titles as a player. You've done it as a coach now. And could you put in perspective how incredible that is that two guys in the same family have done this? <laughs> and you know, what does it mean to your family? Yeah, it's incredible. I think uh, you know, it's, it's incredible uh, to join Bob in that club. You know, and it just, uh, you know, Bob was in the arena tonight. He wanted to kind of stay out of the, out of the camera lens. So it was, you know, he was in a, he was in a box, <laughs> uh, you know, enjoying, uh, you know, the comfort of that tonight. So it was just awesome to have him here for that. And then obviously my dad, you know, it's like my dad, I think he looks at me and he looks at my brother and he sees us coaching in college and, what, would, what it would have looked like, you know, for him if, if he was doing it. Um, you know, so I know it means a lot to me and Bob to, you know, to again, you know, we're the version of my father that would be coaching in college. We're, even after back-to-back -back for me, I'm still just a worse version of him. Up front on the left side. A little bit worse. Yeah, I'm worse. getting better, <laughs> and I'm coming for him. 
Michelle Gardner, Arizona Republic. We've asked you about the potential to repeat. Now that you've done it, Dan, does this feel different? It doesn't. It really doesn't. Um, I mean, it, it's the same, you know, feeling that, that you have. You know, you you just feel so light right now. Um, and, and you know what, though? Maybe it feels a little bit better because it's like the last thing – Knowing how great this team's been, we've taken, you know, you know we, we've worn the everything shirt the whole year, um, and we just, everyone in this organization gave everything so that we could win everything this year. You know, the MTE that we were in, the Big East regular season, the Big East tournament, the regional and, and, and the national championship. So we wanted to give everything so that we could win absolutely everything. And the thought of, like, Cam Spencer and Steph Castle in, in their, their short window of time with us, um, not to experience a national championship like we all have felt. You know, once we realized how good the team was, that became a little bit of a pressure point. You know, it would have, have sucked today to have, you know, blue and, blue and yellow confetti uh, and we'll have to walk off that court with Cam Spencer and Steph Castle. Likely the final question on the left side, left of the aisle, Dan. Dan Walken, USA Today. Uh, Dan, I, I hope I don't misquote you, but you said out on the court something about – UConn giving you all the resources you need. Um, can we interpret that to mean you intend to be back at UConn next year? You're not going to entertain any conversations <laughs> with anybody else that might have a job coming open tomorrow? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't think that's a concern. <laughs> you know, my wife, uh, you should have her answer that. <laughs> yeah. We can maybe arrange a press conference for Mrs. Hurley in the morning. Congratulations, Coach. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, she'll she'll answer that question better than I can. Yeah, shit. <laughs> See? We'd, we'd like yeah, to congratulate you. Coach and thank him for all the time he spent here in the you, main coach. interview room all week. Not a lot of mobility on Zagoria. <laughs> Whoa. I almost hit the trophy, man. Thank you, Coach, and thank you, everyone. The UConn locker room should still be open right now for players.